Welcome back Scallywags, Marine Tech Mike here. This is a kind of a tech training. It's not a tip, it's gonna be a little long for that. Tips are fast, but um, some really cool stuff. We just did a training with uh, wake speed for all of our students and some alumni. We're gonna do one again in the fall um, for more industry and locals. But this WS500 is, is really great product. And this video is about uh, two things. One is some of the advanced features that we've learned about and can do and the history of the WS500 because the inventor lives right on the next island over and he shared a little clip uh, about why he created this and what happened, a little story. I love stories and history. So if you just want to see the history of the wake speed, uh, go to about this minute here in the video and that'll hook you up. Uh, what we're doing is we've been playing with the feature in wire. And uh, by the way, we did a video on programming a year and a half ago. You can delete that one. It's all on the app right now. Um, the app for programming and monitoring when this thing is underway, when you plug in, is super awesome. And so that's another great feature of this. But the features we're talking about is the, the, the flexibility. So if you this i'm assuming you've watched the understanding alternators you know how a voltage regulator works just controls the field and actually this is pretty slick we've changed our our training station here at schedule a college we've got field voltage and a light bulb so these reflect what's actually happening how big the magnet is it turns out that's a really great feature when you're training new technicians and they start trying to figure out and understand how all this stuff works and so the function wire is, is what we want to talk about because <clears throat> we've got a couple new betas. We've been super busy repowering home again. This little beta here, local, uh, Andy Stewart has one of these in his boat, Windsong. It's about a 36 foot boat. And that will also be at the end of the video, about minute, whatever there, we'll figure it out yeah, if you want to skip ahead. But we put a 170 amp Balmar on a little 20 horsepower beta. and because when you do that and you've got a battery bank and it's low, you, it, it, it's got some negative effects. The positives are we want to use a primary engine as a, as a big recharging source, a generator, you know, the generator eliminator. So we don't want a generator in this boat. So we want to be able to recharge the battery bank quickly at anchor. But the problem is if you're putting 170 amps, when this little 20 horsepower is idling, at 850 RPM, it is like, the, it, it almost stalls with the amount of load that that alternator puts on there. So what do you do? You, you need to maneuver and get in and out of the marina and stuff like this. So um, there, there's a different scenario. How do you fix that? Well, wake speed has two ways. Uh, we're gonna talk about white space in a minute, but there's a feature in wire. And what happens is this. So we're gonna power up the voltage regulator. We've got our little light on here, um, which is also a great tech tip for troubleshooting because this will actually flash error codes if you have anything done wrong. And so, but what we've done is we've connected the field, the feature in wire for round one, which is what we did on Andy's boat. Um, this was a year ago, so this is what we knew. Now I know that we can do more stuff. But um, right here you can see the ramp as the field slowly comes up, and we should see it level out about 12 volts. It's not gonna go any higher because I'm not actually turning this alternator. It is making um, a magnet, of course, so you can see it's doing the nice ramp feature and love the little light bulb and the voltmeter here. And so we get up to 12 volts. Now, if this thing, like I said, was full field and we're trying to lift the anchor and get underway, or even make boat speed, we don't, we don't have enough horsepower to do that. And so what happens is we can just take the feature in wire is programmed to make the alternator go to fit the field, the alternator to go 50%. And so half field at an idle will really take this alternator down to 30 amps or something uh, reasonable. So what Andy can do is we just click this feature wire and boom, down to six volts. And so now we can maneuver and do whatever we need or if we want to make boat speed if we're really trying to get all the energy we want so let's say we've been anchored for a day or two in a beautiful bay and we're coming back home we know we're going to plug into shore power we want to use all of this horsepower to make the boat go as fast as it can so we would just limit field 
to half, and that will give us enough to keep the multifunction display going, the radar if we need it, whatever, while we're motoring, but allow us to use all of the 20 horsepower to move the boat. And then if we were um, going to be anchored again, once we got out and got underway, we could just turn this back on, go back to full field, and get all the energy back out of there. I was super pleased, Andy's been using it for a year, it really works well for him. But with Al's here in his training, he said there's a better way that we can even do it. And so you can actually enable uh, the WS500 to optimize your engine, which is what we're gonna do next. It'll, I think it'll be super fun to go down and play and watch this work. So what happens is if you have your RPM, which you could get if it's a modern engine, like we put in King's Pride, you can actually get percent load uh, on the CAN bus, and of course the wake speed will be connected to the CAN bus and it'll know what load is. Or you can use the, the uh, uh, alternator wire that comes off from the stator as well, which will give it RPM, and then you're gonna go in and program it. So what you can do, it's called white space. Ultimately, this diesel motor will last the longest and be the happiest if we ran it at 80% load all the time. And so wake speed's that smart. Al's got it programmed and set up so that if you fire it up and you put this, you know, big alternator on a motor, and we've been doing some big ones. We, you know, I just, we did a, what is it, 175 amp at 24 volts. So what we do, in order to use this white space, this load, is if we had load on this axis and RPM as we came up here, what we can do, this engine always has extra power, often, in every boat, right? You're getting underway, and then however fast you're running it, we're usually not all the way up at 80%. And so there's a bunch of extra energy at different times. And so what the wake speed will do is at slow speeds, eight, nine, hundred thousand RPM, it's gonna limit the alternator to very little. And on the top end, this is a 3,600 RPM engine, if we are above 32, 3300, we're really pushing it hard. That means we want to use all the energy for moving the boat. We will also have a very small field, limited output. But in the middle, what we do is, however, you know, as you run the boat, this, at slower speeds, we're using all that alternator energy to get this thing up to 80% load. And as we increase RPM, and increase our boat speed, hopefully, um, we have less and less of a window. And so that's the white space. It's how much extra energy this diesel motor has to be up at 80%. And so that is super slick. So we're gonna go down and reprogram instead of using the feature in at 50% wire and program that little beta now to be like, oh, at slow speeds, don't do it, high speeds off. And the flexibility and how amazing this, this regulator is, um, super, super cool. So hopefully you learned something about this and you might be able to use it in your particular application. Maybe not, but thanks for watching. Check out Al's history and check out the little quick tour of uh, Windsong at the end of the video. See ya. Okay, down here, Lubrick's Marina. There's that old breakwater, that old ship they turned into a breakwater. But we're on this boat. This is a wind song, Andy Stewart, Emerald Marine. And what we're doing today is going through installing a high output charging system. Okay, we're down here on wind song. You saw up in the lab, uh, our new alternator station, how we've changed it up. But one of the cool things, this is the first boat that we did um, friend Andy from Emerald Marine Carpentry right here in town owns this boat, super nice boat. And years ago, 10 years ago, maybe less, they put in this little 20 horse beta 36 foot boat. And this is the first uh, vessel that we set up where he's using the auxiliary and this is truly a sailing, classing sailing yacht and they sail all the time. So it's just an auxiliary, but we also are turning it into a battery charger. So the boat's got three Firefly um, carbon foam batteries. Luckily generation one before they had all the trouble with them and we have a 170 amp Balmar on here. Now this little 20 horsepower engine at idle 
um, does not like that giant alternator. And in, in, in the future, we're going to put some, some lithium batteries on here. So, uh, But for this stage of the game, this thing can be used for both auxiliary propulsion or as an at anchor battery charger or if your motor you know depending on what you do and we can preload it we've got it set up with this toggle switch right here and this is using the feature in wire on the wake speed so if we're just going to be if we're going to be motoring and need to use half of the engine or so for propulsion we can limit the field to 50 percent and do a do a lesser amount on the alternator and when you're maneuvering around in the marina and stuff it, it's really noticeable if the batteries are low you want to have that shut down so the owner's got the option you can use it either way and that's one of the big benefits of of the wake speed and let's go back i'm ready so this is a little snippet we're working on a video about the small sailboat the feature wire the wake speed we've been putting out talking about these for a while in fact back when we use pcs to update and program them which is no longer we're so excited about your new app but we're here with Al and we want to get the story for future marine tech students about why you created the wake speed and it's a great story so would you mind sharing that in the next no five, problem no problem so and by the way you're going to get a slightly abbreviated version of it um, it was years in the making wasn't it it was years in the making and actually a key part of it happened just right over here on I don't know what C doc or B doc. B doc. B doc. Yeah. So um, <coughs> Wake Speed Offshore was founded by myself and Rick Jones in 2018. We also had a gentleman by the name of Michael Frost, who's part of the Wake Speed story, but in kind of a uh, a, a sad way, to be to be frank. Um, Rick Jones and Michael Frost, they both worked for Balmer, and when Balmer got purchased by a holding company they chose not to, to go with Palmer. Well, after about a year or so, uh, Rick and Mike got together, because Mike was down in Coopville. They got together and designed a very simple alternate regulator with a very narrow purpose for wake points. That's where wake speed comes from. Um, it had two knobs on it. What is the battery profile? Is it AGM or lead acid? And the second knob it had was, is this thing videoing me or not? Yeah, yeah. Is it? Oh, I didn't realize you had that vibe. Okay. Uh, I had two knots on it. You'll have to do some posting with this. <laughs> it's, not, it's for a marine tech. It's one and done. <laughs> one and done? Yeah, yeah, we have our own side. So you'd rather have it right now than right. Okay, that's fine. I get it. <laughs> um, so it was, an, it was a product that they took their experience working with, um, you know, with the, in the marine industry and came up with this alternator regulator that was targeted for weight bumps. And they had very unique needs, mostly around driving giant stereo systems. Right? High energy. High energy, yeah. But it all, depending on which way they point the speakers, you get an extra two or three knots out of the right? Uh, Michael Frost was the designer of the Balmer regulator. Rick was the VP of marketing. And they formed the company called Wakespeed. Well, at some point, point, unfortunately, Michael uh, passed away. And that product was put on the shelf. And then there's two or three beer stories here that involve the Octopus Island, a boat called Otter out of uh, Olympia, uh, a gentleman that's like six foot three, like 350 pounds, jumping up and down on one of these docks over here, seals jumping into the water and stuff. Rick and I ended up uh, crossing paths and we worked uh, on wake speed, uh, wake speed offshore, which broadened the portfolio. We took the wake speed 100 and finished it and productized it. I'm just saying that as a history, because some of you guys may run across that. We actually end of life it because people were trying to use it outside of its narrow definition. It was a great product for white boats when we tried to use it for things that the wake speed fire could do. It wasn't made for it, and it didn't work well. We, we just got tired trying to explain that to people, so we just didn't like it. Before this, my wife and I had retired and sold everything in 08. And it was a conscious choice, because when I was in, in uh, high school, the summer job, I worked for a contractor driving a, a truck between the different job sites. And I watched this gentleman get a big stack of money and retire at 70, and two years later, he died. And that really impacted me. I mean, 
geez, I'm like 16, 17. I thought that was nuts. So I set a new goal to work hard, save aggressively, and retire early. And we did. So 08, I was working for IBM at the time, and IBM called me into the office because we were all working remotely, not for COVID reasons, but for other reasons. They called me in the office and they sat me down at a table and said, we'd like to consider you the party. Would you be interested? And I went, I think we can make that happen. <laughs> so we sold everything. Um, I had read all the glossy magazines about what to put in and I installed the glossy magazine products in my boat. And on our shakedown cruise with over 2,000 pounds of lead acid batteries, I found that no matter how much I wiggled the screwdriver, I could not configure the regulator to fully charge the batteries. It would go into uh, flow prematurely, right? And that- this is, you had 1,500 amp hours or so of lead? Uh, 1,420 of lead acid. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you it, had a big battery bank. Well, we had forklift batteries. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, each cell, we had six cells, and each cell was like, this big, they wait. I, I said, those cells should have lasted 15 years. They should have, but they got destroyed by short chargers. I have often said, if the batteries go bad, we're selling the boat. Well, be careful what you say. Yeah, yeah, no, we're not <laughs> selling the boat just because of the batteries. Yeah, exactly. I, well, plus I had a bunch of young son-in-laws that could actually lift those things. Smart man, that, yeah. No, that was the secret. I mean, it's definitely a young back young. Boy, I tell you, they were cussing me. Was that, that about 300 pounds a cell? 200 names. So that's how um, the VSR came about. Now, it's been widely accepted in the marine RV industry. I've talked a little bit about that. We've had tens of thousands of deployments. Uh, about a little over a year ago, a year and a, and a month ago, we accepted an offer from Dragonfly Energy out of Reno, and we are now part of the Dragonfly Energy Group. So you might know them as battle worn batteries. But uh, we're pretty excited about that. I mean, it's worked out really well. My wife is very happy because I asked her what she wanted out of this whole thing, and she said she never wanted to have to push one of these LEDs in the lid again, so she got that wish. All the ops are gone. Were you assembling these in, in her garage or something as well? You know? We were assembling them in, um, as, as a startup, and keep in mind, this is just over a period of like two years. We had constantly exceeded our business plan. We do a business plan with an upside, we always hit the upside. The adoption of this product is kind of humbling, quite frankly. Well, there's a big need, turns out. There was a big need, definitely a big need. We uh, were at the point where we were looking at facilities here in Anacortes, two to 5,000 square feet. We were looking to hire two or three people. We're getting ready to expand the business, as many businesses are, either up or out. Well, we were going up. And we had a number of entities pursue us uh, to try to woo us, and we ended up choosing to try Excellent. Well, that's exciting for us. Yeah. And it lets me do stuff like this now. Yeah. Because I'm not teach and share. Pushing and LEDs into lids or yeah. stuffing boards into products. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So, more of the wake speed story. I think I've covered a lot of this. Um, Viking Star, we lived on for about 15 years. Our cruising style was at this point in time I'd be heading north. When the weather got nice, we'd head north. And then when we saw people, we'd head more north. And you know, I'd grab a bag of potatoes, right? You know, leaky problems with leaky boats. But that was our cruising stop. We usually went up north, unless we went south, sometimes we went south. But we didn't like to be where people were. And we'd be out for a month at a time, totally self-sufficient. We'd come in after eight, nine months, depending on the weather. Uh, we come in once a month for heavy provisions. And then uh, about three weeks, we tried to find some outstation that had flown in produce, tried to get wilty lettuce or carrots. That, yeah. It's what we do. Yeah, yeah it's, it's what we do. Know those places. Places. Well, I had said when I was hitting this boat out, I'm not camping the rest of my life. I mean, I'm retiring early. I didn't retire to suffer. So we had uh, three different ways of eating. We had water maker. We had washer dryer on it. We had you know, all the conveniences that you would want to have. Uh, I did have the ability to, with repeaters, to reach out and touch cell phone antennas because I was consulting at the time. But by and large, we were 100% independent, including the energy needs. And that's why 
when we took that shakedown cruise and I found out that the charging source wasn't charging the batteries properly, it just had to go, had to find a better solution. Single engine? Of course. Of course. What kind of engine? Uh, inline six Cummins. Cummins. Okay. Yeah, single engine like all boats should be, full keel. Uh, we're very happy with this boat, I'll brag out a bit. It's uh, Ed Monk Sr., known as the Monk McLean at the time. Full displacement, last time we were on the on the list, I think we tipped 47,000 pounds. Uh, we have about seven or 8,000 pounds of ballast in the back, which now that I pulled 20 some hundred pounds of battery out of the stern, I have to uh, go and find that lad and put it back in, because she's a little like this now, right? Uh, very seaworthy, uh, very fuel efficient. We burn typically around 1.1 or 1.0 gallons per hour at our cruise, which is six and a half knots. I found the alternator usually pulled about 0.2 uh, gallons per hour out as well to deliver usually around 180 amps into the battery. Uh, 12 volts, so a couple of kilowatts. A couple of kilowatts, yeah. Okay. So actually, uh, we don't necessarily have a lot of time to go into a lot of this for the details, but one of the reasons to go to a higher voltage is, there's a lot of other good reasons to do it, but one thing is the alternators are more efficient. So a 48 volt alternator I could deliver probably for that same fuel rate, I could deliver three or four k volts. But this is how you dreamed up the idea of voltage regulating and doing it a better way. Well, while you're out on your boat, supposed to be retired. Yeah, supposed to be retired. I, retired engineer, my background, I have two degrees, a uh, degree in computer science and electrical engineering. I retired out of uh, marketing like most good people that you don't really follow in the Sorry, you guys are still in school, right? <laughs> but you know, that's how I retired out. They but, gotta pay for us, they're gonna work until they're 75. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> but I'm sitting there poking the button on that link 10 to see what's going on with the batteries. And it's not charging the batteries, it's going in the flow too soon. It wouldn't fully charge the batteries. And what I found, I could, no matter how, how much I configured it, I couldn't configure it to be bad. And I don't know exactly the reason why, but it might have been because I had such a large battery bank, it was pretty unusual. It may have been that their criteria is just to win. You, you were ahead of the time, I have to say. <laughs> Definitely. These high output charging systems. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what I literally did on our Shakedown Road cruise up the Snake River and the Columbia River is I'd stop the boat in the middle of the Columbia and they would go down into the engine compartment and pull the harness off and put it back on because they'd get an extra 15 minutes. Or I'd stop the engine. And during that cruise, that charging system failed. We got back from the cruise, I float tested it, and also failed the float test, by the way. I had built a DC generator. And as part of the DC generator, it was open air right there. I pulled that off of the DC generator, and that became the first version of the weights. This is, this is the uh, fourth generation of that technology. So this is what I was imagining, some bad scientist down there, you yeah. know, but I can make this part do what I want. And... It's exactly what I want. That's precisely the company was born. The company was born. And we'd gone through, I'd gone through three generations. I was up to the third generation. And at first, I published this thing, I put it in open source. Uh, you could go and download the design files and go and build your own little board. And then I said, well, I can get 100 boards built for like two bucks each. So I sold the boards for five bucks. And then people said, well, we want our regulators. So I started building full regulators and hand soldering on. And then, I started, I was getting ready to build full regulators and stuff already soldered on, and that's when Rick and I crossed paths. Cross paths. And we took that technology, we combined it with the technology that I had access to because of Michael Frost's history and experience, because he's really the guy that started all this, right? I mean, he's the guy that back in the 80s that recognized the need that the house batteries are charged that the starters. So we could take his insight that was you know, left around, and that's how the ways we can. Now you want to ask a question. What was the problem? Why did I have to go down and unplug that thing or turn the engine off and turn it on? This is a representative charge curve for every battery out there. And, and I know that you'll get people, especially if you go back, especially with lithium when they're new, it's like, oh, you don't need this, you don't need that. You know what? They all work the same. They really do. Sometimes people will call it a slight different name, blah, blah, blah. By the way, little inside secret. Yes, you do have to equalize lithium batteries. We'll cover that later. That's tomorrow. That's tomorrow. Or down the road. That's tomorrow. That's that life learned stuff. But every battery in the world, 
Uh, and I'm talking from an alternator charging standpoint. But even if you're AC powered, the big difference is alternators can produce tons more energy than you'll realistically get off of anything short power. I mean, we can put eight, nine, 10 kilowatts into a battery without working hard. You can do that with AC chargers, but it's pretty tough, especially on a 30 amp, 30 amp short. Let me interrupt one minute. Yes, I just want to thank you, Al, for sharing the story because of all these years, I've never got the whole story. Yeah. And nobody has, really. So that was very cool. Well, there's a couple of beer stories that have details in there. Oh, I'll, 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 buy, the, I'll buy the beer. You're going to have to. <laughs> they they come right. with the cost. <laughs> Night study. <laughs> That's right.